let me begin this morning's sermon by telling you about a man called Philip Petit. You all know about this man? You don't know? Okay. He is commonly known as a French daredevil. He became famous in 1974 when he walked 1,300 feet high. Yes, on his high wire walk between the Twin Towers of World Trade Center in New York City. Yes, this is, this is high wire walk. Yep. Any brave souls here would like to try that? Anyone? Wow. Okay, Pastor Jenny, she scratch her head. <laughs> what inspired this move? Actually, it, it all happened on the day when he was in a dental clinic. He had a toothache. And while in the waiting, he was flipping through the magazine. And what intrigued him was he read about these two new buildings is go, uh, were going to be built in New York City side by side. You know what he do? He just stri he stripped off the page from the magazine and he left the clinic where his toothache was still intact. And with this new dream, he flew to New York City and he would look at the new buildings. And he cultivated a plan how to go up to the top of the building and planning how to cross between the two buildings. Every day, he would disguise himself as different construction workers and then to gain access in the building in effort also to conceal all his equipment so that he can prepare himself for the future walks. And that was the time, the earlier picture that he saw, you saw. For eight attempts, sorry, he, he, he crossed over the wire eight times and that was the final time that he got arrested. Yeah, yes, he got arrested. But that did not stop him because from that day forth, he performed high wire walks around the world. Not only that, he wrote a book called Man of Wire and in fact a movie was produced to tell his story. Philip had a dream. Philip Patrick had a dream. He pursued with great audacity. No one dared to do it. Like just now I asked you anyone, no one put up your hand. No one dared to do it, but he did. And he had his life, he had, a, he had a great major breakthrough in his life. He defied all odds to accomplish his goals. Church, like this man, do you want a breakthrough in your life? Can I hear a loud yes? Yes. If yes, you need to step out in audacious faith. If yes, you need to step out of your comfort zone to accomplish what God has ordained for you to do. One man, Philippetic, walked in the air. Reason nights, do you believe that you can walk on water? I hear only giggle, giggle. Can, can, do you believe that you can walk on water? Amen. One man did. And because that he had audacious faith, and his name was Peter, and we will look into the scripture to see how he did it. But before we do that, let, us, let me summarize the preaching series that we are in. Pastor Sepp started the series on position for breakthrough through powerful praise. Pastor Jenny preached on position for breakthrough and speakable joy. This morning, I will preach on position for breakthrough through audacious faith. Everyone says audacious faith. Audacious. Yes. What does the word audacious mean? The dictionaries the dictionaries will tell you that audacious, the word it means to be adventurous, to be bold, to be courageous, and fearless and unrestrained. And what about the word faith means? In the Bible, we are very familiar with Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now. Faith is the confidence of what we hope for and about, and assurance about what we do not see. Today, in order to position yourself for breakthrough, you need to have audacious faith. That means to be adventurous, to be bold, to be courageous, and unrestrained confidence in the Lord and the assurance in the Lord that it will happen. And that is what Hebrews chapter 11 is all about. It means that you have the confidence and assured that it will happen. 
Let me share with you this morning three ways to live our audacious faith. And I would like us to turn to Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. Uh, very convenient, uh? the, 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 the scriptures are, on the, are all on the screen. Uh? Okay. Before this passage, actually, Jesus and his disciples were in a miracle feeding the multitude with the five loaves and two fish. And after the meal, immediately from verse 22, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance, which I found out to be about four kilometers away from the land. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it, shortly before dawn, which is about three to six in the morning, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. His ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on water. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught hold of him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of of God. Father, bless the reading of your word. I pray for everyone who receives the word, O oh Lord. When they hear that revelation word, they will say an amen in their seat. They will not remain quiet. And I pray, O oh God, you bless every heart, O oh God, every hearer of your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. The first way to live our audacious faith is to dare to ask largely from the Lord. In verse 28, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. In the Message Bible, it mentioned that Peter suddenly, boldly, audacious said, Lord, if it's really you, call me to come to you on water. When Peter was quick to recognize that it was Jesus, he began to ask boldly of the Lord to do something that is so audacious. He didn't remain quiet in the boat, battling against the winds. Neither did he want to suffer in, suffer in silence and to allow the situation to overcome him. Instead, when he began to ask boldly of the Lord, the external dangers of the storm no longer bothered him. Breakthrough came when he began to ask. I say that again. Breakthrough came when he began to ask. Amen. Amen. Secondly, Peter was desperate enough for a breakthrough experience. Because Peter himself, he did not want to have the same old way of managing his life against the winds. He asked largely. He asked for the impossible. Do you, know that, do you know that he asked something that defined nature? Because science will tell you that humans are so big that the force of the gravity will overcome the surface tension of the water that's causing us to sink. This Peter, he asked largely. Everyone say, ask largely. Ask largely. Ask largely. And Peter had wanted Jesus to call him to come on water to him because Peter knew this cannot be done humanly. This action was not based on his own ability to walk on water. Peter knew that it has to be based on Jesus' authority to grant him the request. Amen? Amen. Then is there anything too difficult for Jesus to grant Peter the, to, to, to let Peter walk on water? Is it very impossible? No. Why? Because even in Matthew chapter 8, Peter witnessed 
how Jesus calmed the storm while they were in the boat. And also other times, Peter witnessed how Jesus ministered with that autonomy. And not forgetting that just that evening, the number of hours before this, Peter witnessed how Jesus fed the multitude with their five loaves and two fish. When Peter began to ask boldly, when we combine boldness and confidence in Jesus, that is audacious faith. When we combine boldness and confidence in Jesus, that is audacious faith. And breakthroughs come when we begin to ask boldly of the Lord. You know, in Psalm chapter 2, verse 8, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. When we ask boldly of the Lord, He would give us nations for ours as our inheritance. God wants us to ask largely of Him. The question is, do we dare to ask largely? Do we dare to ask largely? Now, it is time to act upon your faith. I remember in 2008, the Chinese New Year Eve, you know, as Chinese, we would go for our reunion dinner for some of our friends who are not Chinese. You know, I, during that year, that New Year Eve, uh, my, father, my father-in-law wasn't feeling very well. And we, can, we, we, we could see him like, you know, every step that he took, he was panting for air, he was breathing very heavily, very agonizing. But anyway, being Chinese, we still go ahead with our reunion dinner. On our way home, we could hardly see, we could hardly see him breathing well. And also because of uh, our family, of, of course, uh, Peter's family, um, they, they were not believers. And they have this superstition that it is not a good thing to have uh, during Chinese New Year festive season to stay in the hospital. So to defy that superstition, we, both of us, we insisted our family to say, you know, we must send him to the hospital. And we called for the ambulance. When we reached the A&E, the doctor just turned to us and said, you know, he contracted pneumonia and he suffered a heart attack. Be prepared for the worst. For both of us, Pastor Peter and myself, we turned to God and we pray, God, you, you save him. Let him have the chance to receive salvation. But something very audacious that my husband prayed. He said, God, you extend his life so that he will receive salvation. The following days, for the following days and week, he was in ICU. It was so crucial. And we will just, we will just stand, uh, we will just pray by his bedside. That God, you will, you just need to answer our this prayer. Let him be safe. We want to thank God he survived. We, he survived and, and, and he, he got well. And we took every opportunity to share with him the gospel. And we took, we took every opportunity even to pray for him. But my father-in-law was a very hard nut to crack. He would reject us. Nearing five years after that prayer, he got unwell and admitted to the hospital again. God sent a physiotherapist. The, the, the physiotherapist happened to be our friend. And she shared the gospel with him, and he received Christ. And we believe, yes, give God the glory. We believe his conversion was never out of obligation. His his conversion was never out of fear. Because when he told us the next day, he was full of joy when he shared with us. And I want to thank God for answering this prayer, you know, what Peter had prayed. A prayer for life extension to preach the gospel to my father-in-law despite having that heart attack is truly a miracle. Hallelujah. The miracle not only meant for Peter himself, the miracle meant for us to witness as well as, as for me. Because this miracle itself has inked into his faith journey so much that he believes nothing is impossible for the Lord to answer. Hallelujah. Reason nights. Do you dare to ask largely? Do you dare to ask largely? Many of us were like the disciples. We, 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 we saw how God answered prayers. We can even give testimonies to people to tell how great God is. 
part. However, along the way, storms came, just like the disciples in the boat. The storms came, and darkness clouded our mind. Fear crept into our heart. We did not see Jesus. We, we saw ghosts. Right? Yeah. But I really pray that today you will see Jesus. Because storms in life are inevitable. You need to ask. You need to call out. You, like just now I mentioned, breakthrough came when Peter boldly asked of the Lord. You need to boldly speak up and do not keep quiet about the situation. Are you desperate enough for a breakthrough like Peter? Are you there enough to ask largely for the impossible like Peter's? Bo Peters, it's time for you to speak up and call the mountain into the sea. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you dare to ask largely, even for some of us, do you dare to ask largely for a turnaround in your finances? Do you dare to ask largely for a turnaround on your health? Do you dare to ask largely? Maybe some of us, you have the longest, you know you have a situation at home. You are praying hard for your children. But today, do you dare to ask largely for the Lord to intervene and turn, that situa turn the situation around in your children's life? Do you dare to ask largely? And at church level, do you dare to ask largely for more souls to be saved and our church to grow to 500 and even to 100 folds? Do you dare to? Amen. amen. Yes, some of them in your seat, you say amen. amen. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. It knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. When you ask with boldness and confidence in Jesus, that is audacious faith. And Jesus will respond in faithfulness and generosity. If you believe this for yourself, you say it aloud, Amen. 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 Now, the second way to live out audacious faith is there to step out in faith. Coming back to verse 28, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Come, Jesus said. When Jesus said come, it required, a, it required an action. Just like when you are bickering someone to come. This invitation requires a physical action. Here, Peter did not just only ask largely, he took action and he stepped out of his boat and he walked towards Jesus. In James chapter 2, verse 17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Very commonly we know faith without action is dead. In the face of the waves and winds, the most logical and safest place for the fisherman to be in is to remain in the boat. The boat was Peter's security, right? Because Peter had the, all the know-how to handle the waves when the waves hit his boat. But this time, Peter didn't remain in his place of security. He obeyed Jesus immediately. He stepped up in faith and he walked on water to Jesus. In action, Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on water to Jesus. Um, last Saturday, actually, uh, I was still preparing this sermon, and I heard this sister giving thanks to God. Oh God, I thank you for the, I thank you for, for, the, for the time in India, for the breakthrough, you know. She was giving thanks to God for her breakthrough. And I have asked her permission to share the gospel, uh, to, sorry, to share her testimony. And this person, none other than Pastor Philip's wife, Christina. 
Okay, I, I will try to share, uh, try to imitate her. Lah, huh? But this testimony has to rewind back to many months before it happened. Okay, it says that way. Uh, her husband actually invited her to join him for a 10 days conference, also as MIT trip in India. Despite the umpteen times of asking, whether are you coming, whether are you coming, then she would reply him, I'm not sure, I don't know, whether can I take Indian food every day? Too troublesome to brush tea with, water, uh, with bottled water and other concerns, blah, blah, blah. She will give these reasons to him. A few days later, the Lord spoke to her heart. What is so difficult for you to go? Can't you make some adjustment and get out of your comfort zone and go? Christina said, oh yes, God. Okay, she said yes. Okay. Next, this pastor husband come again. And he said, uh, you are invited to speak at the ladies, uh, ladies fellowship meeting. <sighs> then she get, got upset again because of her fears, because of her stage fright, because her heart was pound so fast that she could not think, and she got upset. Now, God knows her. God come again. <laughs> God spoke to her again. You have to take a step of faith to step out and face your fears. Of course, later, later, you, will, you all can talk to her. Huh? She will tell you that she enjoyed the trip, she enjoyed the ministry, she enjoyed the food and loved the people. And then thanking God that she was able to do all this without fear because she obeyed the Lord by stepping out of her boat. Just now, I was trying to verify with her. I'm going to say all this cor correct or not. Then she said, the important thing you must say uh, that I obeyed the Lord and God really took away all my fear out of my, my heart. Amen. Amen. Give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Friends, this morning I will ask, what is your boat? Is your boat the false sense of security? Is your boat your familiar ground? Is your boat a pack of lies from the enemy telling you your current lifestyle is good enough? And the lies of the enemy stop you from stepping into the life of abundance that God has intended for you. Today, in order to have breakthrough, you must step out in action to obey God's voice. Perhaps many of us here, God is asking you to step out of your boat. What is your boat? It could be in an area of finances. Maybe you are just so fearful that you will have lack when you tie. God is asking you to step out of your, your boat to tie. Perhaps God is asking you to step out of your boat to serve in ministry. Maybe you are just a member here, but you are more than a member, only God knows. But God is asking you to step out of your boat to rise up. Perhaps your boat is your pride. Is God asking you to Step out of your pride and forgive that someone. Only you know. God will speak to your heart. Don't let your insecurities of your comfort zone hold you back from your destiny, my friends. Jesus is calling many of us to come. Because in, even in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5b, it says, So I will be with you, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Just like how when the disciples saw that it was a ghost, but Jesus said, take courage, it is I. I'm with you. Even in the darkest moment in your life, I'm with you. I pray that this Joshua 1, 5b will ink in your heart. Whenever that you have any situation, you will take courage. God will be with you when you take that step of faith to obey. Everyone says, Today I'm, Today, I'm stepping out of my boat. Amen, amen. The third way to live our audacious faith is to dare to overcome doubt. Returning to verse 29, then Peter, then Peter got down out of the boat. Walking on the water came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him 
you of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Peter was an ordinary man just like you and me. When Peter, begin, when Peter looked down beneath him, the waves were churning and fear magnified. Fear magnified, fear overcame him. When Peter looked at the circumstance, he started to sink. You see, in that moment of crisis, Peter doubts. Peter was double-minded. Double-mindedness caused him to sink. What does the Bible say about doubt? In James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Just a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. When you look at your circumstance instead of Jesus, doubt will enter your mind and you will begin to sing. In order to stay afloat in difficult situations, we must not look at the visible signs around us, but look to Jesus. When you look to Jesus, doubt will flee. Just like Peter, when he was sinking, you know, when, just imagine with me. Peter was sinking. He did not put his hand and say, Lord, save me. He did not do that. But he stretched out his hand and said, Lord, save me. Just like in your circumstance, when you are in that circumstance, when you are in that situation, raise your hands to worship God. When you are in the presence of God, doubt will flee. Fear will flee. Your situation will flee. Because in the presence of God, God will give you that assurance. It's just like in the verse over here, verse 27, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, we are reminded that Jesus, when Peter called out, Lord, save me, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught hold of him. Likewise, in your situation, when you raise your hands to worship the Lord, you are saying, God, you save me. And the Abba Father will lift you up. Just like how you care for your little children when they are in danger. They say, Papa, Papa, I'm afraid. What do you do? You, leave, you, you bend down and you lift up your child. You carry your child high out of that situation. Likewise, when you are in the circumstance or situation, I want us to lift up our hands to worship the Lord God Almighty. You know, um, we have been already one year in RCA. I remember uh, when we started 5th of August, right? Okay, in the month of August itself, last year, uh, when I decided to step in and, and uh, get into this church plan, just the month itself, I do not know why, suddenly, this key account home that I'm very, the, I, I have very good relationship with this customer, suddenly this key account, these sales just got lost within that month, in the month of August. And it chiseled away a huge part of my sales. But despite of this, despite of this, I did not, I did not, I did not say, oh, is it because of warfare or anything? I, I just give up and I go back. No, I did not do that. I cast out my fears. I cast out my fears to the Lord. And I press on in prayer. I press on in, in the promises of God that has given to me. And I ask the pastors to pray alongside. That is how. That is how that I demonstrated this so-called raise your hand and worship God when you are in a situation. Amazingly, when I, when I began to do that, within that same month, this sale came back to me. Somehow this account came back to me. And not only that, by the end of December, our sales department sales hit above the sales budget. It, it's a good news to all sales people, I want to tell you that. Yeah, hallelujah. Together we give glory to God. Huh? Amen. Friends, are the circumstances around you causing you to doubt God? Do not doubt God, but claim God's promises for you. Like Abraham, he has waited a long time for Isaac to come. He continued 
you know, you, you need to be like Abraham, continue to press on and wait for your Isaac to come. Just like in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. In summary, to have audacious faith, you dare to ask largely from the Lord. To have audacious faith, dare to step up in faith. To have audacious faith, dare to overcome doubts. In living out these three principles, you will experience breakthroughs in your life. In verse 33, then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. You will need to know that the ultimate reason for our breakthroughs is so that the world will worship Jesus. So when you step out in audacious faith, you don't only receive a breakthrough for yourself because you will draw other people to Jesus through your testimony of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.